Hello, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming online. Thank you, everyone, for coming online. I have with me the amazing Dr. Bolum. The amazing Dr. Quiet. You can see from his face that he's extremely quiet and conservative and very reserved. And it is an honor, it's a great privilege to have such an humble man and a man that has made us proud all over the world. It's a big honor for me, and I know it is for all those that are listening as well. Please join your hands with me as we welcome into our Deronke live show, the great man, the humble man, a son of God, a family man, a great husband and a father to many, not just his own children, to many children. And he has me now, he has to adopt by force. So I'm part of the, <laughs> I'm part of the clan now. Welcome with me, Dr. Abiola Uyeleye. Welcome to the show, sir. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. To, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Adiroke Onipede, and I have with me, like I mentioned earlier, Dr. Abiola Oyeleye. Dr. Abiola Oyeleye is the founder and the CEO of the I Doctor Lagos, with four branches all over Nigeria. That is awesome. Having been an entrepreneur in Nigeria, we know how difficult it is. As an entrepreneur, a medical entrepreneur, that is a huge work, and we know it is not easy to come by and to promote and to grow such an industry in a very, very sensitive situation in our country right now. Things are medically, things are sensitive right now in Nigeria, and it's an honor to have him share with us his experience, his journey, all the way from King's College, from his childhood. Has this ever been your dream, sir, to be a medical doctor? Please share with us your story. Uh, for as long as I remember, yes, at least I think in primary school, um, I was fortunate to be educated in what I call the best schooling system in Nigeria, uh, a mix of both private and public schools. Um, I started my primary education in Ibadan, and probably for the last two years I was in Lagos, in both um, Corona, Papa Corona, Ikoi. Then I went to King's College for my O levels, and then back to Ibadan for my A levels, and then back to Lagos for my university degree. So most of my education was between Lagos and Ibadan. Now, so like I said, I feel I went to the best of the type of education we had to offer in Nigeria. And education to me was not just academia. Education involved uh, extracurricular activities, sports and everything to make you a complete individual. So I, I was fortunate to benefit from all that. And that helped me later on in life as well. And it's still helping me as we'll discuss uh, as we go on during the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I like the fact that you went to King's College. And I know yeah. a whole lot, a whole lot of Nigerian great icons went to that school. Share with us how was your, your experience. And I know there are some known names that are doing well, just the way you're doing well by the grace of God, that were in that school. How was it growing up then in King's College? How was the education then? How was it with family? How was it then? Was it serious as in education, so tight you have to be with your books? Or was it a little flexible for you? How was it with the family and all that? Okay, to get into King's College in those days, we had 12 states in Nigeria. So what they did, they took four from each state. That's 48. And then the first 12 in the common entrance exam. So that's 60 people, or the first 12 that wanted to go to King's College. So that's 60 people. So we're in, we're 60 people taken into the set, 30 in each arm, or two arms. And really, our program in touch with maybe everybody except two or three people who I graduated with. So everybody alive, except two or three were, because we grew up together, we formed a very cl close bond. 
and um, we are in touch, networking, helping each other, helping each other's children, and things like that. The education in King's College was very, very um, complete. We had the um, Literary and Debating Society, we had the African Cultural Society, the Cadets, Photographic Society, all sorts of things. We had these, um, the social, I uh, can't remember what it is, but for part of the Students' Union, we ran the, the what we call the Coke Shop. That's the, the shop whereby people can get snacks or students can get snacks and drinks. And I think for about three years, I was involved in running the Coke Shop. And I think in my final year, I was actually in charge. That's final O-level year, I was actually in charge. So there are a lot of things that can distract you. We're all always very, I mean, every afternoon you ask to go and do sports, and we offered at least six to eight different types of sports. So it's not just about academia. You have, you become a rounded personality living in King's College. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, I love that. I never knew that about King's College. I thought it was all, all about the books and all that. That's yeah. amazing. And the yeah. fact that you, you ran the, the school shop or the, bought the business shop, so to speak. That tells a lot. Was that where you got your entrepreneurial skills from? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's just, it was just like um, taking up as responsibility. And the excitement. I mean, I was in boarding house for, for the last three years. Mm. And when you run the shop, every Saturday, you're supposed to go out and do the purchases for the shop. So for me, going out on a Saturday when my classmates were in school was an added excitement. Even if going out just meant going to Sherry Road or going to Okari Market or somewhere like that. But, you know, it's like um, you sort of, without realizing, you are building your character in various aspects. So that actually happened. That's fantastic. That's awesome. I, I, I love that. That's awesome. So the kids, so it's not about, because the parents need to know that these extracurricular activities have a way of, you know, enhancing the skills and the knowledge of their children and their world, not just for now, even for the future as well, because you might not be able to tell seriously if, if it, it helped your entrepreneurial skills, but I'm sure there were one or two things. Like you said, responsibility. You know, you, you, you actually learn to be responsible because you are in charge. You know, in your final year, and that's a big deal. And when the other kids are having fun, sleeping in the hostel, you have to restock, you know, to the to the shop what the what what was needed at that time. And that's huge for an SS. I don't know what grade they use at that time. For SS, I'll be year five or year six. From one to five. From one to five. From one to five. From one to five. Something just occurred to me that my greatest childhood picture is when I was a Boy Scout, and this was about the age of seven or eight. So wow. as you, just as you were saying, all these things make you the individual you are. My very, my very first job in the UK, the only reason why I got the job was because on my CV I had written that I, I represented the university in five different sports. And it so happened the consultants who we wanted to work with was a sports loving man. So he looked at the CVs of everybody. And as far as we was concerned, we were all qualified. So who, how does he distinguish? And I didn't know that until about three, four months in the job when he just called me outside and said, do you know why I give you the job? And I said, no. He said, because you're a sportsman like myself. Oh. So all these things, without yeah. realizing, they help you further in life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's awesome. God bless him wherever he is. <laughs> God bless him. Like now, as I, I want to I want to ask that um you love sport. That's that's do you still do? Do you still do a little one or two there and there? Well one, one or two, you know, as you get older you start dropping things. Can you do uh, can I you do push to... up, sir? Can you do push up? Uh, I I'll try. I'll try. Maybe, how many, like maybe, how many can you do that? Like how many can maybe you do? Two or, maybe two or three now. <laughs> I'm not 200 though. 
just two or three single push-ups now. You that that's fantastic. I I, I applaud you. You're able to do two, uh, you have tried because I know a lot of younger men they may not be able to do what well done. Sir. Thank you so much. That's yeah. that's amazing. Thank you. I yes, think sir. I'm dropping most of my sports. There are oh. two things I do now. Tennis, yes, which I've slowed down because of my knees. But I'm mm. a very good armchair critic. If I sit in front of the television and then watching any sports, I can criticize to the end of the earth. So, <laughs> so yeah, they're like us. Awesome we are program. together on this table, sir. We are together. We are the ones that always <laughs> tell them where to eat the football. And how to score, yeah. but we are never on the field with them. Exactly. <laughs> we are together. You'll be the chairman, where I will be the chair lady of the association, sir. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so Great. much. Thank you, sir. So let's 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 go with your experience at the UK. You were in the UK to further your education. You got your first job in the UK. Why did you have to come back home? Okay. Why did you come to Nigeria? Why didn't you stay there? Okay, I did my first degree in Nigeria. My Okay. medical degree did what we call the house job and the youth service and i went to uk for postgraduate training i had always thought i'd come back to nigeria okay a lot of a lot of us did a lot of people change their minds um why did i come back i just felt i'll i'll be more fulfilled mm. coming back to nigeria uh i mean then i was greatly appreciated I was relatively well paid, you know, but I just felt that um, I, I wanted more out of life rather than just go to work, come back, you know, watch television or whatever. So I just felt there was the urge to come home. And luckily, my wife had the same, the same views. So deciding to come back home wasn't a problem. I had done exams to go and practice in America. She had done exams to practice in America. And we just thought, do we really want to go to, we've done 15 years in Britain, do we now want to go and start in America? So we said, no, 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 let's come back home. So we came back home. Wow, I think I need to applaud you for that decision because it's a big deal. It is a big deal for a lot of folks out there. And like one of my friends used to say, who's going to build the cart? But you are among those that did that. And I think you, you, you did well. Thank you for coming home because a lot of a lot of us are benefiting from from the services that you you're offering and for the support you're giving the medical you know system in Nigeria. We are grateful for that. And big shout out to Madame for supporting that dream as well. I hear she's a pharmacist. Oh that, yes, that's huge. A, 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 I don't know how to say though. An eye doctor, a pharmacist. Uh, you want to not eye for your for your children to sir. Uh, I said, how did you hear that? I I, I research that. I have little beds everywhere. My little beds okay. are flying all over. Yes, sir. And I, okay. I hope the standards are not too high for the kids. Having a father as a doctor and a mother pharmacist, uh, your jam score must be like uh, 400 or 400. No, no, no. We let them, we let them be themselves, okay. do what interests them, you know. Um, and um, hopefully at the end of the day, they'll find themselves in their careers that they would like. Oh, great. Oh, great. Are, are they, are they, are, are they, are they, are they, is anyone among them that you think might tell the medical way? One among them. Um, okay, I have three children. My son is an engineering graduate. Wow. He now, awesome. now works in finance. Oh, great. Great. Yeah, my second child, a girl, she's just finished a degree in psychology and neurosciences. Wow, my wow. My child is doing business management. So it, it's quite That's, varied. It's a balanced family. Yes, Sorry? it's a balanced family. You can all open, you can all be members <laughs> of both members for the company. We have well, a financial yeah. controller, we, we have the engineer, <laughs> and we... Thank you. At the end it's of the day, it's Contract. a matter of encouraging Contract. whatever talent they have and whatever yeah. interest they have. Yes. Yeah. Congrats, sir. You have, you have sown, and I'm sure you're reaping the rewards by the grace of God. Congrats, sir. Yeah. Well done. So what, in yeah. the, let's talk about family. So how did you, because Madam, being a pharmacist, you've been a doctor, and the kids are all graduates, how were you able to balance this life together with your busy schedule, attending to the kids, and still 
pushing your dream and achieving this dream of being, you know, opening the hospitals all over Nigeria and servicing the needs of the people. Okay, I think the most most important aspect I look at is actually the home front and the career comes a close second, okay? So once yeah. you're happy at home, and it it's, um, takes away the, the pressure from you yeah. once you're happy at home. So if, if I were to be truthful, my wife don't, did most of the work at home. Mm. Uh, Ladies, and, are you hearing? No, after we'll be doing <laughs> But I won't, I, won't, I won't admit that all the time, but let me be truthful with you today. <laughs> so I like that. Um, that. Thank you. I think it was a vision because when I came back from the UK, I had practiced at a certain standard. And when I came to Nigeria, I felt that I needed to practice at a standard that I wanted to dictate. Even though I'd always thought I'd go back into teaching or things like that, I felt I needed to practice at the standard that I wanted to dictate. And that's how I ended okay, up in private practice. Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, I so said that's how I ended up in private practice. So, uh, okay. I doctors, we started there. Yeah, I came back in 2003 from the UK. And then we put things in place 2004 and opened our, opened our doors to, to patients in the eye doctors February 2005. Oh, so we've been going for about 15 years. Oh, and we started with, um, thank you, we started with a small clinic. And the vision I had then was don't... Um, don't open a hospital, just do a clinic. And with what is going on in Nigeria now, if you have a hospital, your overheads are very, very high. Even mm. if you have one patient or 10 patients in the hospital, you have to run staff 24 hours. You have to run your facilities, your generator 24 hours. So my vision was basically to just do things in the, with a clinic. And a lot of eye cases actually people people have operations and go home the same day so i never felt i should open a hospital so we opened one clinic and from one clinic we are now we now have four clinics in so, as awesome. various parts of Lagos as you as you introduced oh great job sir great job and and that was that easy i know it wasn't but what were the things that <laughs> helped you it wasn't easy, but you see, um, I think it's it's focus. When you have a focus, focus. and you walk towards it, you know. Mm. Um, I also think my upbringing. I didn't. I mean, even though I had a privileged education or and things like that, I wasn't given everything I asked for. Mm. You know, I was taught value and um, also going through medical school, it taught you that you needed to be, you needed to work hard and focus. I know a lot of people who went to medical school, very brilliant, and then they had problems because they were trying to rely on their brilliance. Mm. So medical school to me was more about continuous, sustained hard work rather than rely on the fact that you think you are you are brilliant or so so i i think that this also carried on further into life once you decide this is your goal you stick to it now most people know the medical industry you don't you don't um open today and start making money tomorrow yeah. i remember a story i used to tell people that once i started Open, I opened at about 9 o'clock. Between 9 or nine and 12 or 9 and 11, if there are no clients, I, I'll go around to other clinics, other hospitals, seeing the doctors there trying to drum up business for myself. And once someone says, oh, my member of staff will call me that, oh, there's a client now. 
the man, I said, okay, fine, I'll be back in five, ten minutes. So basically, you just rush back, hop, hop on a lakada, or however you need to get back. You get back to the clinic, and uh, you went downstairs to dry your sweat, so people don't, the patient doesn't see your sweating to come up. And you go in and you consult. And when the patient goes, you go out again. And I did that for about two, three months continuously. Wow. Because, yes, wow. because you can't just sit in the clinic and expect patients to come. No. And then you also, you have to sell yourself to your colleagues, first of all, and then to other uh, multinationals or other people who you think will bring, bring business your way. Oh. Wow. Well, I never knew I never knew there's marketing for medicals. This is this is awesome to hear. Thank you so much, Ooh, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So you had to go open let that. your huh? No, I said if you open shop and nobody comes, you have to you have, you to, have to put and... out. I yes. like that. Thank you, sir. So, like you said, number one, focus. Number two, let those in that field of business know what you're doing. Those That's in the right. field of business. Then you push yourself. You don't just relax and say, I don't have market. So you have to go, to go look for that market. That's all. Awesome. And you are, you are jumping on Okada. Oh, yes. Uh, quite a, a bit. So. A, 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 a I doctor well trained in UK. I haven't told my wife yet because she doesn't like Okada. So I'm keeping it secret between both of us. <laughs> Your secret is safe with me, sir. Your secret is safe okay. with me. We will not let her know. You have to pay to hear this this odd gist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for sharing. What other tips pulled you through? Now you had one clinic that said, you know, say getting the client. So when did you know that you now had to have branches? When did you know you have to push? Because in Nigeria, which will maybe answer that question, then I will I will it will lead me to the second question I want to ask about that profession. I realized that I had a sizable amount of clientele on the mainland. Okay. And the clinic was in Victoria Island. So I decided, okay. let me open in. But you are running up and down, you are young, you still feel you can conquer the world. So I'll go mm. to Ikeja in the morning and start heading back to VI in the afternoon or vice versa. So there was a day I, I left VI about one o'clock or one fifteen or one thirty. And I didn't get to a care till about three thirty because of traffic. And okay. the patient was so upset and told me off that you can't keep people waiting. You're like professional, blah blah blah. So I took the positive thing out of that. So what I now did was the days I'm on the island, I'm on the island. The days I'm on the mainland, I'm on the mainland. Because it's mm. crazy it was crazy in those days driving through traffic that you can't predict. Sure. sure. Wow. Wow. That's true. Very, very true, sir. So share, so share with us, for the kind of environment that we have, we know the poverty level in Nigeria is very, very extremely low. To be, to be responsible in my words, it's extremely low. So how, for Nigerians, do they really come for eye checkup? Do they really, because I know it's until when the thing is like, it has hooked us, like we say. It has hooked us. We have no other option. That's when we begin to say, okay, maybe I need to check my eyes. You know, the early stages. Do Nigerian really come? Do we come to do checkup? Do we do we take this um this um part of the body very vital? Do we take it as important as as, as it is? Thank you very much. Um, that's one challenge we have in Nigeria. Don't seek medical help or medical attention until there is something that's really pushing us to do that. Normally, you should have a lot of checks as, as um, maybe well men or well women checks. Mm. And the reason behind that is that it's not every disease that shows symptoms very early. And in my field, the most common one of that is glaucoma. However, like um, I was involved in a lot of, um, or I was involved in quite a bit of charity. I was involved in Lions Club. So a lot of times we, we throw services open 
to people who can't afford the services. So it's also, you know, also develop sort of like a humanitarian aspect for people who, you, who cannot afford your services. Because as you said, the truth of the matter is that in Nigeria, we have a lot of people who can't afford the service. I remember once going with a Christian charity to, to um, a certain part of, let me just say to Opupa, there's no need to hide that. And we got there on a Sunday. And when we went there on Monday, there were about 250 people waiting for us to start the, the ice cream. And I felt, where will you get 250 people waiting at 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning in Lagos? So I felt we were doing something. Tuesday, the next day, there were over 500 people waiting, and it was raining. So there are a lot of underserved <laughs> parts of the country. And it, most of my colleagues, that's an ophthalmologist, optometrist, most people do a lot of going into the community to to serve. Unfortunately, most of us are actually primarily in the urban areas. And then we go to the rural areas to carry out our services. But those who are in the rural areas, they also see a lot of patients. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But that's, that's, that's huge. And how do you, because like you're saying, it, it seems as if the, the, the if, how will I say it now, those that need it is, is like overwhelming for, for your profession, for those in your medical profession. And it, it, they might not be able to meet. Go to any medical... Sorry, I was saying if you go to any medical screening, where yes. they're offering blood pressure check, diabetes check, um, uh, check for well women checks, all sorts of things. If you go to any screening, look for the area that is the biggest crowd. It's always the eye, the eye screening, always. Mm. And, mm. you know, for example, a lot of people, all you probably sometimes do, you give a pair of glasses and it changes their lives. Glasses oh. that probably cost 1,000, 2,000 naira change their lives. And that's obviously because you know what glasses to give, you know what is right and things like that. Yeah. So um, you also get a lot of personal fulfillment when you go for screening. At the eye doctors, we have a, a dedicated screening unit. And um, usually, well, obviously, because of, because of COVID-19, we've, we've not screened for some time. But usually when they go out to screen, you know, they come back tired. You can see them very tired. So I hear um, me, sir. Yes, go on. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. Go on. Hello, can you hear me, okay, sir? I think there's a, a technical problem. Your your face is frozen and your voice is going up. Okay. Hello, sir. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, I can. Okay, we had the network issue from my, I think it's from my hand. The call was. Okay. You can go ahead, sir. You're talking about the, the when you have a comprehensive checkup for the well being, the eye sections are always massive. Yes, yes. And so, apart from doing the service, there's, you get, there's personal fulfillment you develop from helping others. Yeah. Which is which is which is awesome. But what what role what role do you think our government can help? Like you said, a lot of people don't know that just one thousand glasses that they buy to help correct whatever challenge they have could lead to more challenges. So what what what? How can how can people? Let's start from the people because it's not always about the government all the time. How can we ourselves help ourselves? You know, then how can the government and how can organizations? 
corporate organizations, the government, everyone, how can everyone, we ourselves, the government and the people, how can we all come together and you know create the awareness that this um, self-treatment won't solve, but it creates more problems. Okay, um, talking about the people, the first thing is that uh, we need to educate the society as the about the importance of these things. Sometimes you might feel it's not necessary because you don't know the importance of these things. Sometimes you might feel I can't afford it and I won't even bother seeking help, seeking intervention. Now, what the government... Well, let, let me talk about Lagos State government because I... I actually served on the board of the Lagos State Health Service Commission for some time, so I know a lot of the intricacies of health in, in Lagos government. Now, what okay. the government can do, or what the government does, is to allow facilities to be open to people who can't afford it. Like Lagos State, they will tell you for certain age group of children, medical care is free but the mm. truth of the matter is that they do go they might get free consultation however they don't have the medication to support it and it's the young children and the elderly but the the service doesn't have the medication to support it so like i said the, the awareness is important to be aware around um eight, 10, 12 years ago, when um, Governor Fasola was there, he built a lot yeah. of, of um, MCC, maternal and child centers. I think Center, he, yeah. He, he, yes. And they were actually, some of them were actually started before he came on board. And what happened? A lot of uh, what we call the maternal mortality and infant mm. mortality went down. A lot of yeah. people didn't attend hospitals for childbirth or went very late. So mothers and babies were dying. But when we had eight MCCs spring up in all different areas of Lagos, some ladies go home going to deliver and they want to stay a week before they go home because of the fantastic facilities that were there. Yeah. So the government works by putting infrastructure in place. What they also did was to make it a bit more worthwhile in terms of the doctor's uh, facilities for them to practice, equipment. Because if you're a doctor and you're trained to a certain level, and when you go into the, when you go into the uh, hospital, you don't have all, all the things you need to do to, start to see patients and everything, you get a big solution. So Governor Fashola put that in place as well. Um, unfortunately, there's always a lot to be done and government can't do it all. So well, there are a lot of facilities that were springing up. But to be honest with you, the main issue with Lagos is our population. Mm. The population of Lagos is ever growing ever growing. So what you put in place today, by not the same. tomorrow, it's not the same and it's not adequate. So that's another thing. The main problem in healthcare now is healthcare financing, i.e. who pays for healthcare for individuals. Is it payment at the source of utilization? That means you go in, you have a headache, yeah. You either go to the pharmacy or you go to the hospital and you pay for it. Or is it the insurance whereby you've been paying a little bit, everybody has been paying a little bit somewhere. And then when you need it, you just go to the hospital and you don't get billed extra. Yeah. Healthcare financing is our main problem in Nigeria. Once we get healthcare financing right, then a lot of people will receive much better treatment. Mm -hmm.
Hmm. Thank you so much. I like the way you, I like, I like that the way you itemize, you know, the roles and the, that is not as if um, they're just saying it, but these are things that have worked before. They've been tested and it was, like you said, from some years back, government then put some things in place and the feedback was fantastic. And of course, because of the changing population, we have a whole lot more to deal with right now. And so that means we have to evolve with the population and with the trend of things. And like you said, the, the one that can make it visible for us right now is in the insurance angle to medical facility, you know, the finance of med med medicine, which is which is huge. And I think that's where the HMOs come into play, if you're right, sir. Yes, the HMO is coming to play there. Um, we have the NHIS, which is the National yeah. um, Health Insurance System. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. we don't we don't feel them in Nigeria. Mm. If you're in the UK, the National Health Service, you really feel them because you go anywhere and mm. you get treated, whatever happens. That doesn't happen in America. So it depends on what type of system you are. But in Nigeria, the, the NHIS, the coverage, that is the percentage of people who are covered by the NHIS is still very small. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of work to do in that respect. So now so the wake up call for the NHIS and for the, you know, for government, governments to come into play and see how they can make it easy for people to come for assessment before the deed is done, like we always say. Let's try and see to create more awareness. I remember those days when we were yeah. growing up, HP advert on, on the electronic media, you know, telling people that you know the different sicknesses in the highs, the glaucoma, like you said, uh, glaucoma, if I'm right, glaucoma, cataracts, you know, and those different types before they get really, really bad, really, really bad. Please, and it's also a call for all of us too as well. When you feel it, not that when you feel, I think it's necessary. How many times in the year should we go for eye test? How many times a year? Okay, that's a very, very good question. Now, if there are no problems, okay. once in two years, if you're an adult, okay. if there are no problems, okay? If you have glaucoma in your family, mm. that is either parents, or siblings, mm. it's better to go once a year. Sometimes once in two years, yes, if you have, uh, and they're giving you the all clear, that's fine. But if you have glaucoma, then depend on how bad your glaucoma is and how, or, or rather how well controlled it is. Sometimes you might have to go every two or three months. So it's wow. not the same for everybody, yes. But it, it, a schedule which we could say, for example, at birth, the child has its first eye test. And what is the eye test there? Just looking at the eyes to yeah. make sure they open, open, to make sure it's not sticky, and yes. things like that. Yes. If there are problems before the next the next stage, the, the, the mothers will come and tell you that. Uh, my child yeah. is catching my attention. It's not looking at my eyes or things like me. that. Mm. So preschool, just before you start kindergarten or secondary school, you go for an eye test. Even when the children can't read letters, there are ways we can test them. You can have the picture of a or an animal. Or most children will know what the picture of, of animals or toys or colors are. Then before you start primary school, before you start secondary school, before you start university, so all throughout yeah. life, we are having eye checks. And then, like I said, if adults try and do it at least every two years as an adult. Every two years. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I'm sure a whole lot of people are on this table that have never in their lifetime <laughs> gone for any eye test. And I, uh, we are many. <laughs> we, are, we are many. So this is the call to every one of us to try and call the eye doctor for your eye test. It's not as crazy as you think. The cash not result it's far worse than the money to redeem when there are challenges thank you so much well, well, thank could i ask you a question yes sir no ask me sir i know the question <laughs> when did your husband have his eye test last 
That's why I did. That's why I said we we are many that are out there were on this table. No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you are. Yeah, let, okay, husband. yeah, let's call him. Okay, he's running away. <laughs> you have your eye test. You have your eye test. Mr. 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 have you had your eye test? No, he has not, sir. He is coming. Okay. We will schedule him. We have so, to schedule him. No, you have to take him. You know, men don't really okay. seek medical help. Mm, men mm. are very, very lazy about that. Wow. They sometimes, yeah, they sometimes think I'm they are, they are strong. Enough. There's nothing wrong with me and everything. So you need to take him. Don't let okay. him go and, and uh, say he'll go, he'll go, he'll go and never go. You need to take him. So we have to, that means we'll come together, definitely. That means we are okay. coming. We'll, we'll come out. Uh, Come out, we'll come together. When <laughs> I almost need to, and I almost, I almost, gave, I almost wanted to use the 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 free ticket I had left for this week for myself. I even told Miss Kemi that I should use it for myself, so that we don't have any winner for this week. But I had to, my church mind, and you know, give it out to one of our very ardent followers that deserved it. That the time was she felt. It's, it's we are pleasure having a celebrity in in, in house. <laughs> Ah, I told you that you should have taught me. Let me pick the care. Aqua. Ow. I'm just, I'm just in this my small room, you know, doing what I feel that uh, you know makes me happy and makes everyone happy. Thank you so much, that. So let us, let, let us. How do you relax? Because I can see that you're a lot of, um, a lot of um, groups that you have been the president, the vice president, and and you also seem very relaxed and conversational. Conservative. How do you how do you relax? How do, do you do you listen to music or do you watch movies? Because I know doctors are always, you know, very serious, always reading and reading and reading. Okay, do I do I read? Um I think probably when I'm traveling, if I'm on a plane or something, I get okay. a book and I read and you know, probably finish the book about a week or so after getting back. I okay. try to get involved in tennis uh, oh. on a regular basis. And if you oh. notice, I'm saying get involved. I'm not saying play. I get um. Uh, I, I remember now that you are, the, you are the, on the on the side of those that tell them what to do. Exactly, exactly. No, but um, like sports is is one of my favorite pastimes, you know, and. Um, Okay, I, I was on the board of Lagos State Tennis Association at one stage, so that was for youth development. And we had to sort of like go around the state and um, go around various various tennis clubs and things like that. But I spent quite a bit of my spare time my spare time now in church and uh, church activities. I think uh, yeah, it's frozen. It's from this. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Okay. So sorry, sir. I don't know why that um, the network that we are using is having funny, is giving funny. Okay, okay please go yeah. ahead. About the tennis, the youth tennis club. Okay. No, I said we're doing a lot of um, should I say youth development or okay. or scouting, so to speak. Speak just going around basically, and then I mean, there's a I'm not sure how old she is now, whether she's 17 or 18 years now. A young lady called Oyinam Quadri. she is Africa's number one for her age group. I mean, wow. I'm proud to say that I knew her gosh, maybe eight, eight years ago or so, and I mm. knew her father quite well anyway. 
I'm not saying that I was part of her success, but I'm part of her cheer. I'm part of her cheerleaders. Cheerleaders. So yes. So there are quite a few people like that, and I think if uh, a lot of them, we have talent. Yes. We have we talent. Do. Yes. So it's just a matter of encouraging encouraging people. In them, motivating them. Mm. Yes. Yes, we do. We we have amazing. I mean, people share stories with me of Nigerians doing fantastic and amazing things all over the world, even within Nigeria, yeah, all over the world. And it took shock you to know that, you know, they have self-motivated themselves, no no support from anywhere. They push themselves with And it's awesome to hear such things from this nation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. As we round off, can I share with us, you know, the most challenging, you know, part your joining as as an opto, please let me pronounce that your name. Ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologist. Thank you, sir. Please, can you share with us the most challenging part and the most fun? You know, what, what one of the days you can never forget. Huh. Wow, <laughs> that has caught me on the words. Um, <laughs> there are two things I'll mention. Yes, sir. First thing in the when I went to the UK, you had to work twice as hard mm. to get half the recognition of your contemporaries. Yes, sir. First of all, they don't expect a lot from you, so mm. they don't um, think you have a lot to contribute. So you have to prove yourself. So I think that that's one thing. The second thing probably was my transition to practicing in Nigeria. You know, uh, abroad, especially when you work in the government service, anything you need is provided for you. you. Well, when one came to Nigeria, I found out that I had to provide everything I need and medical equipment can be very expensive. So I think it was just a decision that virtually everything you make is plowed back into the business. And until you come to that realization that you need to invest in yourself, yeah. um, you, you, you won't practice at the level you should be practicing. That's really deep. That's really deep. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So share with us, well, the, the, okay, will I say, will I say regarding your patient, do you have any, any one, any story that, that made you very, very happy? You are more, I know you're always happy with all the, you know, the solutions uh, you've given, but was there anyone that was like, just a little bit unforgettable for you? Okay, uh, a, a lot actually. I'll, I'll give you two stories. Okay. One was a certain lady from Edo State okay. who her son was based in America and brought mm. her for cataract surgery in my place in Lagos. Okay. And we, we did this surgery, and next day we took off the iPad. And Mama hadn't seen for about four or five years. Wow. And she started shouting. Everybody was dancing and singing. And you were trying to, <laughs> you know, they, they, there were other people in the waiting room. But yeah. uh, yes. So that's one. The second one was when I had just qualified. And I was doing my national service at military hospital Benin. There was a lady I treated and um, she was on the verge of death, so to speak. And luckily, or should I say by the grace of God, we were able to get things right. Mm. And um, I had forgotten all about it. And one day my father called me and said, oh, did you treat so-and-so person or something? So I said, oh, yes, this was that. I said, oh, yes, this was about a year ago. He said, oh, that she embarrassed him in church, that she fell to her knees 
was oh. pulling his kids, crying and shouting and shouting that, oh, your son saved my life, your son saved my life. And my father was quite happy, self-conscious, yeah. oh. and also a bit embarrassed. So when he said that, you know, I, I didn't actually know that um, she knew who my father was when, mm. when all this was going on. Because she was virtually unconscious for a few days. So those sort of things are, are, are touching and, you, you know, you feel fulfilled. I mean, in those days in Benin, people who couldn't pay would bring yam tubers or, or corn or something to you. And, well, you know, but, I mean, I think to, to me, medicine has been very rewarding. Um, I'm not saying it in terms of financially rewarding, but I'm saying it in terms of satisfaction, personal satisfaction. And um, if you are not looking for a lot of immediate wealth, I feel if you've chosen your specialty right, you'll mm. enjoy medicine. Mm. Probably a few of us, as we get older, we are still doing too much, so we're not enjoying life as we should, you know? Mm. So my, my uh, common message to many of my colleagues is that your life shouldn't be spent in your clinic or your hospital all the time. You mm. need to do things outside. Mm. Yes, um, like I was telling you, I'm um, quite involved in a lot of a lot of extracurricular work, yeah. activities, social work, even work in the church as well, you know. So you just do things that, you know, you don't just sit and say, oh, I'm a, I mean, I'm thinking about work all the time. I discourage mm. that. <laughs> I like that. Thank you so much, sir. As we round off, thank you so much. You mentioned that you do, you know, social work, beyond the clinic, you know, enjoy life, and of course, the work in the church. Let's come to the church and you. Let's not come to the church, but let's come to you and with God. Mm -hmm. With you and God. How has it been for you? Are there times that you pray? You know, are there times that you tell him, that I'm confused right now, I need you to intervene. Do you believe in, in his power to do such? Okay, the, the first thing I'll say is, if you, uh, I think it's Proverbs 22, 6, that you train the child in a certain way with, with the word, and he or she will not depart from the word. So I need to thank my parents for putting that in me. I can remember going to church and Sunday school right from anything I can remember. I can tell you the churches that went, the Sunday schools that went and everything. So once that has been implanted in you, um, it's, you're always going to come back. I don't mm -hmm. think that has failed. Secondly, I've been a chorister since um, 1976 or 77 or something. Today. You think, sir. You can think, sir. <laughs> So I've been a chorister for oh, awesome. nearly, awesome. nearly 50 years. Okay. Wow. Yeah, wow. I've been awesome. For nearly 50 years. And oh, um, the sort of the, the, the church I go to, it's an interdenominational church. Yes. So it encourages everybody to be participatory. So you are not mm -hmm. um your your Christianity is practical Christianity. You're not mm. just um, reading or quoting, quoting the Bible and doing other things when you get into the secular world. You know, mm. we have, we, we try to make sure that all the sermons, you relate it to yourself, whoever you are in, uh, whoever you are in the church. So and we have quite a wide array of people giving sermons as well. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, your story is so inspirational, sir. So, so much. You've been quiet for 50 years. 50 years. And the young ones, you know, these yeah, days keep complaining, I don't have time. I don't yeah, have but, time. Uh, you know, we don't have time. Can't imagine. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir? Did I say 50 years? Did 15 say 50 years. years? No, was it 50? 50 years? I think I was old, like me and well. Sir? I'm not that old, though. Even me, I know you're not old at all. You're just a 27 year old young man. I know. And Thank I have a son. I have a son that he has three kids that are graduated. I just young, very young. I, I believe this. Believe this, sir. Please, you if you don't mind, if you don't mind, can you just use a song to sum up your journey? Just a song, a song to to show that um, you know, it's it's been it's been a it's been a fulfilling life so far for you, and you know, with all not that. In the sense that it's not excluding all the challenges, nor the ups and down or the mountain. But the fact that you are here, you are here because you followed, you were focused, so you learned to push yourself a bit more. And you are grateful, like you said, for your family, and you are grateful for the man above and your parents that has you know, channeled your energy to see the man above as a spring. Just Sing a short song for us. Let's have the honor of hearing uh, chorus that Dr. Oyele yeah. I'll tell you about the songs. I'll yes, tell sir. you about the songs. I think we've run out of time, so I won't sing. I'll just yes, tell so that you about that. Right. yes. Yeah. Okay. My, my, no, my, no, 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 don't <laughs> tell, sir. Sing it, sir. Sing it. Don't tell. Sing it. <laughs> my, my phone is not 5G, so the song might not come well. No, it's okay. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. We don't need to be pitching, sir. Just sing it the way it is, sir. We appreciate it that way. Okay, let me give you three three of my favorite hymns. Okay. 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 So those three songs are my favorites. But you didn't sing them, you only said them. No, when you when you invite me back again for another show. Are you sure? You are when building you, yourself out of that. This bill is not granted. This bill is not granted. Then I'll sing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been awesome talking with you, oh. and I'm grateful. I am honored. This is fantastic to share your experience, to listen to you on this great journey of yours. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Oyeda. Yeah, we are grateful on behalf of myself and all everyone out there that have listened. And that will listen, those that will listen afterwards, we say thank you. It's, it's, it's something that we know that if you have called you for a TEDx you know, program, you would have billed us like five billion naira per hour. So we, we get this. <laughs> It's honor to just listen to you, you know, share your principles and your life journey. Thank you so much. May God continue to bless the work of your hands. May he continue Amen. to increase you and may he continue Amen. to prosper you. We pray that Amen. this will not, these blessings will not just be for you. For generations yet unborn, be blessed. I say it all the time, medical professionals are like our, you know, the Bible says we are small God. We are like small God. And we, I always pray for them for more wisdom, you know, to be able to help, you know, in the healing process right now, all over the world, you know, and I like when they're now more in tune with God. Perfect. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll call you to say thank, thank you after the show. So we'll let you go. Master, you. shout out to all the doctors in the eye doctor clinic. We appreciate you guys beyond the work. Even though we know that doctor pays you, we also know that you go overboard to do more to all the staff of eye doctor clinic all over nigeria in vi leki yaba and um, bagada we appreciate every one of you to our dear friends uh managing social media account Kemi, we say thank you my dear friends the staff your admin manager Kemi, we thank every staff for supporting this dream for supporting dr oyelaye and the biggest thank you to madam to our madam of the house for bringing you back to nigeria with her that's the greatest of the greatest of them thank you mommy we appreciate you and to grandma and to grandpa Oyeleye, we appreciate them as well for showing the pathway of the lord which is the most important gift any parents can give them. thank you so much sir have a fantastic thank evening you for, thank you for having me thank and you sir. As you said we do have 
a wonderful team at the Eye Doctors, and um, I appreciate working with them. Like a lot of times, I travel a lot for conferences or things like that, and I might go for two weeks or so and maybe not make any call back or make just wow. one phone call. Wow, thank you for having me. Uh, I like, I've enjoyed your show. Thank you, sir. I think the last 10 interviews I've had, it's all, always been about cataracts and glaucoma. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank okay. you. Have a fantastic evening, sir. We'll let you go now. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope you had fun. To everyone that came online, I see you all the time. I see you. To so those that comment, to those that just watch and hide themselves, we'll see you. Thank you, Dr. Ebenezer, all the way from Argentina. Always, always tuning in. My friend, my brother, I appreciate you, Doctor. God bless you. God bless the work of your hand. Ebenezer, too, has a channel on YouTube. Doctor, his name is Ebenezer Idowu Ajayi. He teaches on Yoruba speaking. He's trying to encourage younger generations to speak Yoruba. And I think that's fantastic. Please subscribe to his channel as well. And yeah, this fantastic young man, man making us proud, make us proud in Argentina. He's doing so well for himself and for us as a nation. We are proud of you. Thank you to my friend Abimbola Atishola, to um, Emmanuel Nwabweze. I see you, my brother. Thank you, everyone that came online. Thank you to the massive team at the Eye Doctor Clinic all over Nigeria. You guys are awesome. It's been an honor. On behalf of the winners of the last weekend, the ADMO, she was at the, at the clinic and she had a fantastic comprehensive test. And this week I have a friend, one of our followers to Taiwo Oshifeko, he will be there to join them and, and to get his eye tested. And like what invited us, I hope he's going to be a pro bono for Mr. Nipedi and I to be there as well. And we will come by the mercies and the grace of God. Thank you everyone for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment as well. I need you guys to please subscribe. Seriously, I do need it. And I pray that God will continue to make your own dreams come to pass in Jesus' name too. Have a beautiful evening. Stay safe, I beg of you. Stay connected to the source. And like we say on the show, the day you wake up to your dreams is your morning. Anytime you wake up, as long as you wake up, by his mercies and by his grace. Have a lovely weekend. And see you on Sunday. We are going to have again Neka and Isaac Moses. The Goge Africa team. God bless you guys. Have a lovely evening. Bye, everyone.